Hi and welcome back to the lab. And today here on the bench uh, we have another legend. So that is this little nice radio. So that is a standard C558. So that is a 70 centimeter and uh, 2 meter uh, dual bander. And uh, yeah, that is from the 90s. Um, a very nice and uh, very good radio of quality and uh, the radio came in with uh, a flashing display so that means something is really wrong and uh, let's see what we can do well look here so that is uh, our legion uh, a really uh, beauty as I already said uh, from the 90s and their uh, standard uh, was in cooperation or was uh, a daughter of uh, Marantz and uh, well they really produced uh, high quality radios and uh, so that is uh, what we have here so it is uh, still um, nice to um, bring them back uh, to life uh, but to be honest it is more a restoration it is not a repair because um, as many of these old radios this radio is suffering from uh, badly leaking uh, capacitors so I think uh, that is really a restoration job what we have to do here and uh, well what uh, I can uh, tell you so we do not uh, see here our uh, blinking uh, anymore simply uh, because um, I had uh, the radio run um, after checking it when uh, it came uh, in and uh, it was uh, at uh, the power supply for several hours and uh, the blinking and flashing of our display is gone so this uh, flashing here is indicating or was indicating or generally is indicating that uh, the PLL, PLL is in an unlock condition and what I've seen else is that uh, the radio was consuming a lot of current and that all was already showing that uh, there um, is basically a leakage but uh, when you have a radio uh, or any electronic device for a longer time uh, connected to a power supply and as long the capacitors um, are not totally dead they try to heal so uh, they try to get back to their performance and that is what we uh, see here um, as well so the flashing is gone and therefore we could assume oh great it is uh, running it is good but it is not still we have a lot of bad capacitors and therefore let's start this restoration job here yeah and uh, that is uh, how I had it uh, run here for uh, several hours and uh, yeah I had a power consumption of uh, over 250 milliamps and the radio got uh, hot and that was already uh, the complaint uh, of uh, the owner um, and now you see we have uh, still um, a jumping uh, power consumption which is uh, not normal according our specs we should see in a dual mode um, and it is uh, switch to a dual we should see 70 milliamps on receive of course and you see it is uh, jumping back and forth and that is still uh, showing uh, a leakage because that is not uh, normal so there is not um, any signal connected here uh, to the radio so that should be steady right well um, so let's uh, directly go here into our job okay so here it is a part 
and uh, well this radio is a kind of uh, sandwich uh, construction so we have uh, more than only one PCB um, over uh, the other and uh, what we uh, look at here is uh, our two uh, meter um, PCB and uh, here our controller board and uh, underneath uh, we have uh, our um, touch um, PCB and uh, yeah underneath here uh, the second PCB underneath is our uh, 70 centimeter PCB and uh, what uh, you uh, see is uh, already this little uh, caps which are known as um, yeah very critical and um, I've already uh, checked here visually a little bit and uh, you can see that uh, we have already leakage uh, capacitors down there and at uh, this uh, capacitor you uh, can directly uh, see what's going on so you see here already where uh, the leakage uh, got uh, out and uh, well so that is uh, the same uh, situation as uh, all this uh, capacitors um, this one and as well this one so uh, therefore of course uh, these capacitors have to go and uh, we have to check here the through hole uh, capacitors as well and uh, we have additional to that some uh, tantalium uh, capacitors like uh, here and uh, we need to check them um, of course as well um, but um, well before we uh, can really go ahead we need to take um, it apart a little bit more so that I can finally take out here uh, the first layer so that means the uh, 2 meter PCB and uh, therefore yeah so let me um, prepare <clears throat> that we can go and uh, take it all apart okay so the first part uh, is done uh, so what you see here is uh, that uh, I've taken off here our uh, front uh, panel right and um, the front panel then gives me an access to our LCD uh, PCB and I can flip it over as you can see um, here we would uh, normally have our um, speaker sitting right so here uh, and of course the other way around and um, then we have of course uh, here our main processor or MCU and uh, we have here our display uh, processor and as you can see we have here again some uh, capacitors uh, which we need a minimum check if they are fine and uh, I have here the CMU um, or the CTN uh, it depends 160 module um, which is uh, finally the CTCSS unit and um, that sits right let me flip it over again and uh, that sits uh, yeah you can better see it here so that sits here in this slot and is it is a way uh, in in the way um, when you try to get here your PCBs out and you already see how delicate um, that is to take it apart but we do not have another chance we have to do it okay as you see everything is apart so um, we have here uh, our housing we have shieldings we have our speaker and uh, our front panel and uh, of course this uh, frame which uh, is um, yeah that is some um, 
difficult uh, since uh, the old uh, glue we uh, have here on it uh, yeah dried out so we need uh, to replace it that uh, it uh, will hold uh, afterwards um, on the other hand uh, you can see so the PCB is uh, soldered to, to this frame so uh, you need to desolder it otherwise you do not have an access uh, to our uh, module and now of course we uh, can take a closer look on uh, what we have so that is a UFH unit 70 centimeters and uh, that uh, sits here normally on the back of course so we have here uh, our power amplifier and uh, everything uh, we need and of course when we flip it over so we have here our logic we have our PLL and uh, everything for uh, 70 centimeters then um, on uh, the uh, 2 meter module which is of course also um, populated uh, in a very high density and uh, that all as you can see hangs uh, together here over our uh, flex uh, wire cable and uh, it is um, not a good idea to uh, disconnect it because that oil is uh, soldered as uh, you can uh, see it here and uh, it is not a good idea to uh, disconnect it completely as long you do not really need to right so uh, therefore um, the best way is uh, to do it uh, this way very carefully um, you really need uh, to always take care here on uh, your ribbon cable and uh, well underneath here so you can uh, take this shielding off and there we have um, the oscillator right so that all is now accessible and uh, what we need to do as uh, already uh, discussed so our SMD uh, electrolytic capacitors are really the pain here we have so and uh, let me give you an impression on the ESR and uh, what you see here so that is uh, 317 uh, ohm which is uh, much too high right this one uh, for instance as you can see um, it is 1.6 kilo ohm the ESR and uh, that is and you see it is uh, going up as you can see huh? so it is completely uh, dried out and that is uh, what um, is here creating uh, our problems so you see while I'm testing I mean uh, we are feeding here the capacitor um, with the current um, and uh, you see while uh, the current is going through the capacitor our value is increasing and I mean if you're a little bit uh, familiar to what you do with the ESR testing you know that the values we expect are normally around uh, an ohm or even lower 0 0.2 or 0. 0 0.02 ohm so that is what you uh, normally expect and not 6.3 kilo ohm as uh, we uh, have it here so and that is uh, with all this um, uh, caps this little SMD electrolytic caps we have here on the board and that is the reason why we really need uh, them um, to uh, switch them out so and that is now uh, our job we uh, have to do and uh, yeah this is really not easy so we really need to be very very carefully that uh, we uh, do not destroy here um, anything you see how close it is here to uh, the connectors and that are connectors we cannot uh, take out so they are soldered in no way 
uh, to get them away but uh, we need to work here on uh, this four capacitors on the 70 centimeter board and as well here on the two um, meter board we have also uh, one two three um, capacit capacitors which uh, we need uh, to swap out that means let's start here on the 70 centimeter board let's prepare everything to be able to um, get down here with a hot uh, iron to really be able to take the broken faulty ones out okay so here you can see the situation uh, under the microscope and you see that uh, I have covered um, here our area with um, tape uh, to protect here the other components and of course here uh, our connector which uh, I've covered here and uh, now we really need to, to go down to um, the contacts and uh, let me here increase a little bit the light um, let's see if we are able to uh, see it so down here for example you already see um, that we have a corrosion on this contact and uh, that oil will uh, make it quite difficult to really get uh, this components uh, off so yeah that uh, is definitely not easy and I'm sorry I can't do it here on camera uh, since uh, I have so um, narrow space uh, that I really need here my full um, view on here our uh, field of interest okay so as you can see the capacitors are out but uh, really I can tell you if you do not have any experience with uh, SMD rework so don't try it you are definitely uh, gonna crash your uh, PCB and uh, at least uh, or finally the radio so be careful and uh, give it to somebody who has the right tools and who has the experience to do jobs like this so I've uh, cleaned it a little bit and uh, I put now uh, of course uh, fresh uh, solder here uh, not solar uh, flux to uh, our solder points um, in order to uh, clean uh, them uh, finally and uh, the best way of course to do, to do this is uh, using Vic okay so let's try to clean the spots Not too bad so far. Very nice. Yeah, I think I think uh, that is good. The rest we uh, definitely uh, can uh, clean here with uh, some alcohol and yeah that's okay that is definitely okay perfect okay our pets are uh, all fine so uh, no question but uh, what I've seen here I'm not sure if uh, we can uh, see it here uh, let's see if we can get it here a little bit more into focus but uh, this through um, has already some uh, corrosion 
so we definitely can uh, see it here and the kappa already is uh, a little bit uh, destroyed which uh, I do not really like I hope uh, that uh, the through is still functional so that is uh, a very serious issue not sure um, I don't think that uh, you can see it it is really um, you know at the edge I can see that uh, it is broken so and that may uh, be a disconnection um, to the through we we have here right uh, that is not a good that is not a good one it is definitely not a good one here uh, not nice okay as you can see our new uh, titanium caps are in and uh, well um, I was able to reflow down here this uh, area where we had the disconnection so that is uh, fine as well and uh, now with the tantalium uh, capacitors it uh, yeah I expect that uh, it lasts a little bit longer um, also the new uh, SMD um, caps are also good and uh, do not dry out that fast but anyways it was much easier uh, to place here this titanium uh, types uh, since you know or oh, you see how narrow that hole is but eh, it might be that you don't see it here under the microscope uh, because in reality it is completely different and look here the capaci capacitor which should um, give us 33 microfarad only uh, shows uh, 680 something picofarad so that here is uh, the little guy 33 and uh, even when I switch it over to ESR look here and that is the ESR of the same capacitor so 41 kilo ohm where it should um, be below uh, 1 ohm or maybe this cap uh, a little bit uh, above 1 ohm but uh, never 44 kilo ohm so and uh, that is what uh, is gonna happening with uh, these uh, capacitors so no wonder that uh, they can't uh, work in the circuit and uh, yeah that is the reason why the circuit is failing finally Okay, and uh, as already discussed, we are ready down um, here in uh, this area. And now we uh, have to flip over here our PCB and uh, we need to prepare everything uh, to be able to swap out here our caps in order to bring the radio back to life. Okay, so I've rearranged everything a little bit here to be able to get uh, easier to uh, the capacitors we need to get out. And uh, we have three here. This one, this, and this here. So I believe most critical might be uh, this one here because uh, we have to be very careful here with uh, our wires which uh, we can't uh, put away in a better way so that is one and okay the other two well should work should work so um, it is uh, exactly the same procedure as we know it from the uh, 70 centimeter PCB so yeah I think I do not really need to put that on camera okay so all critical capacitors are replaced and that means now uh, we put back um, our PCBs into the housing step by step and uh, let's see if uh, the radio will work or if we have something else to do okay so far the radio is uh, back together 
So the only thing is here our um, speaker wires which uh, needs to get uh, soldered down but uh, well first uh, let's uh, perform um, and test if everything uh, is uh, working so I have still the frequencies in our generator which uh, we tested uh, with first okay so what we need is of course to connect our power to the radio and then let's see not sure if uh, it is already switched on. <clears throat> Let me switch on my power supply which is on now but the radio is not on. Nope. Okay. So let's try. Oh! Sounds good! And it is already receiving. So let's see I need to be very carefully not to do here a short. Yeah, so that is uh, for 38, uh, 70, 50 megahertz, so 70 centimeter band, which is receiving. Um, well, I guess the best is uh, let me flip over here um, our um, front. And then I think it uh, is easier to do our testing. So let me switch it back out and then let's uh, flip it over. Okay, better position now. So let me switch it back in. It's receiving. Okay, so let me uh, put it down. Let me put it down and uh, let's uh, change uh, the camera. Okay, so that is better for testing and uh, you see we are receiving here with uh, 94.6 dBm which uh, is of course uh, nicely low. Um, minus 93 is on uh, UHF uh, S9 level anyways. It's uh, receiving perfect. So let's try transmit. Let's try transmit. Oh wow! Look what we have. So it is uh, transmitting on the right frequency, and uh, we are transmitting with uh, 4.5 uh, watt, which is uh, pretty good. So nothing to complain. Okay. So let me go over to. Um, let me go over to 2 meters. So let me set here the frequency. Um, frequency. Okay, 145525 five, five megahertz. And the radio is receiving as well on uh, 2 meters. And uh, while we are here, Let's uh, do the testing here as well. Transmitter. Okay, so it is uh, definitely transmitting on the right frequency, but we are at uh, 0 0.388 Watt. So let me double check here our uh, power output. So it is on the lowest. Let me go up. Yeah, the display is really tiny and it is hard to read. So let me see what we have here. Ah, okay. So that is uh, 5 uh, watt and as you can see we are on the right transmit frequency and we see that uh, the modulation is working as well. So that means finally um, our radio is uh, definitely working. Okay, so uh, now we have seen uh, that it is working on receive and transmit and uh, 
fulfilling the specs, so no problem at all. Uh, so the last request I have is uh, to perform here the uh, frequency extension on, um, of course, uh, VHF and UHF. And therefore we need uh, to change here something off or on our um, yeah, a processor board and uh, yeah, therefore let's uh, go into that. Okay, so we have the situation on board. Um, interestingly, here is one part, so uh, normally here is a little bridge inside, um, which is uh, how it looks like um, originally. Um, but I've uh, tested it, uh, so the extension uh, on the TX side uh, does only go up to 150 uh, megahertz and uh, with our frequency extension it should go up to 174 but uh, it doesn't. Uh, on the other hand um, we can uh, clearly see here that uh, somebody already was in and uh, was trying obviously to um, extend uh, the frequency. I do not see the second um, part which uh, is a diode and uh, therefore um, I have, let me see if we can get it here into view a little better. So we have here the copper uh, shielding and uh, we need uh, to lift it up uh, because the second uh, component which needs to be changed is under this uh, copper field. So therefore yeah, so that is, um, of course, uh, the solder point where our copper is soldered here to the unit. And now let me try to lift it up. Okay, so first, um, as always, we put a little bit uh, fresh flux here to the situation here on the board. And now let me see if uh, I'm able to lift it up here. Let's uh, say uh, my fume extractor should be in place, which is not. And now it is. And I should have a good view. Okay, so let's uh, try what we can do. not want to come up. I mean uh, here our solder joint is uh, open. No problem. Do not see if there is something in addition. Not sure where. Oh, okay. Ah, it was uh, glued to uh, the components here. Okay, very nice. Yeah, and uh, here, oh, yeah, you, see, you see there is a double-sided uh, tape here underneath. Okay, um, so let me go over to the component. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Can't find it. Hmm. Uh, give me a second. Ah, look at this. So somebody was already in and uh, almost destroyed it. Uh, so it looks like uh, that uh, the person who tried it uh, was not able to get finally um, this uh, double package uh, diode um, out. And yeah, so 
that is now a mess here on our board. I hope that, uh, yeah, I really hope that I can clear it. But, uh, you know, we can finally um, use it afterwards. Uh, that is not sure, but hmm, let's try our best. Okay, so let's start and let's try our best here. Okay. So I really hope uh, that I have a chance to get the diode uh, out without uh, damaging here our board. Uh, yeah, so what can I say? What can I say? Okay. It looks like that uh, we were lucky also yeah we need this diet still we need it and therefore we need to be very carefully that we do not lose this little uh, flea Ah, I really don't like it. Okay. Okay, so... Hope that is okay. Because, uh, of course, what we need to do is cleaning the pads. Ah. Cleaning the pads. Yeah, and uh, that uh, brings me back to the warning not to touch radios like this uh, when you do not have the right tools and uh, the experience to work on uh, these uh, radios. But the most important uh, point is definitely having the right tools. Okay, let's see. Not too bad. Looks good. Okay. Some alcohol here to clean it a little bit. Okay. Some air to dry it out a little bit. That was, of course, and obviously, my generator. So that is live. And I'm missing here some solder. Okay, here we have it. And now let's go ahead and hope the best. Oop, one second. Okay, so that is one solder joint, and now let's try to bring the little component back in place in the right way, of course. Okay, so it would fit, but that is only the half step. I just wanted to see if uh, our pins are still usable. 
But what we need uh, to do else is uh, we need to scrap here a little bit um, underneath this point where you know our new uh, solder joint needs uh, to get right so that is um, more or less in the same axis let me see how we can get it so let me see yeah. that is nice Okay, let me check if that might be already enough. Not sure. Let's see. Come on, little diode. Let's see. Yeah, that would work I believe that would work yeah that's good that's good let's go ahead okay so let's try to do our first uh, step that we get here the right positioning See. Yeah. That should be fine. And now we can, of course, go ahead. But I just want to clean a little bit more um, the PCB that uh, the new solder joint um, will be fine um, finally. So. And now let's try our best to get it tacked here to uh, this point. Okay, so some solder. Let's try. good and now we can finish here this one which does not look quite nice but we're gonna do it right now okay good and of course our last one uh, yeah where I need to change here the radio one second okay so now I've uh, flipped over or turned uh, the radio in the other direction simply to be able to uh, get closer okay we need of course some flux Okay, and uh, cross fingers. So the issue is, I do not know what kind of uh, solder the guy who tried it uh, first used. But, uh, you know, I was not able to clean the leads here of our component, which uh, makes it uh, definitely a little bit more 
uh, complicated um, since I'm soldering finally here with uh, you know with the old um, um, solder which is definitely not a good idea okay cleaning it it a little bit uh, where's my little brush uh, Gone, gone. Okay, okie doke. Now let's try. Uh, that looks pretty nice. So, quite uh, happy how it looks like um, considering. Uh, what uh, condition we found when we start off what oh, is good no problem okie dokie okay so that's it so far and now let's go ahead and let's try if it works okay everything is back together and we are in a test configuration so let's uh, see what we can do and not sure if you can read our um, our display so it's uh, 165 where I'm receiving and the question is now do we or are we able to transmit okay so um, we are again here on uh, receive on 165 and now let's see if we can transmit and yes absolutely nice so we are able to transmit and um, additional to that let me see if I can change um, the power let's see what do we have now oh. Uh, give me a second yeah and uh, I'm on the highest position and I do I'm able to uh, transmit but uh, as you can see it is not full power and that is clear uh, because we are out of uh, the band limits and that means our filter uh, needs to be readjusted if you really want to transmit in those regions so that was not the request so um, it is clear that uh, uh, our output signal is attenuated a little bit because of the filter setting because it is for here in Europe 145 megahertz and the same we have of course on um, 70 centimeter anyways um, we have proved that uh, we were able to uh, fix this radio and uh, you've seen um, that was really delicate because it is all so tiny and uh, we have uh, sandwich um, a PCB one over the other and uh, that uh, was definitely a challenge and uh, you have seen how you can end up um, with uh, the frequency extension um, when you do not have the right tools and may be not uh, enough experience to work on uh, those units anyways we are here at the end of our video and um, thanks for watching and catch you next time